Hey guys, I'm going to show you an AI tool that writes perfectly optimized prompts for you every time. And if you stick around until the end, I'm going to show you how to take those perfect prompts and put them into a prompt library so that you can change certain variables each time. That way you're never rewriting prompts. Trust me, this is a game changer because when it comes to LLMs or AI tools like ChatGPT, Gemini, Claude, common rule is garbage in, garbage out. What we wanna do is create a perfectly optimized prompt that gives you the absolute best results and exactly what you need every single time you put it in to one of these AI tools. Here's how to do it. You're gonna go to console.anthropic.com once you get here, if you don't have an Anthropic account, you're going to need to sign up for one for free. Once you do that, you'll get to this screen that I'm on now. It costs less than a few cents. I mean, maybe one cent. So you can do a ton for $5. But you might not even need to add any money yet. But as you can see on the top of my screen, it says get started testing Claude with $5 in free credit. So you'll just hit claim. If you don't have that, then it's really easy. You just add $5 with a credit card and you'll be good to go. Next, what you're gonna do is add your phone number. When I did this the first time, it didn't give me that offer. I had to add a credit card and then I started testing a bunch and then it offered it to me. So I think eventually if it's not there right now, you should get that offer and then you'll get those credits. So I put in my phone number and now I just need to update this code that it sent to my cell phone. Great. Once you're at the screen, you need to create an API key. What's an API key? That sounds really confusing. It's not. Imagine you go to the library and you want to check out a book. You need a library card in order to do that. You just show your library card to the librarian and that tells her that you can check out a book. An API key is the same thing. It's essentially a library card for computers. API stands for Application Programming Interface. Here's how to create one in two seconds and start creating perfect prompts. You're going to click on Get API Key. And you'll go up here to the right-hand corner and click, click Create Key. Then you just choose a name for the key. Very simple. As you can see in mine, I created Prompting. The important thing here is that you need to keep this secret because if anybody else gets it, they could use it to get all kinds of information. It'll give you an opportunity to copy it. So just copy and paste that into your Notion or Notes or wherever you keep things private and organized. Once you've created your key, you'll go over here to Plans and Billing on the left-hand side of the screen and add a credit card. Or if you unlocked the $5 coupon, that will be automatically applied and then you're ready to start using it. You'll go up here to the top and you'll select Dashboard. Next, go over to Generate a Prompt. This is where the magic happens. You're going to put a prompt in here. I'll say write a YouTube script about prompt engineering. I'm not going to give it any other context because I want to show you how easy this is to create perfectly optimized prompts using this tool. Now we just select Generate Prompt. It's going to automatically format it with all of the prompt engineering things to include Markdown. If you don't know what Markdown is, I talk about that later in the video. Okay, so now this is what I have. You are tasked with writing a YouTube script. Immediately we're telling it what its role is. It goes on and on. You can see these brackets here. They're called variables and I'm going to show you. But basically a variable just lets you change certain things within this prompt structure. But that way you're not retyping out all of these long prompts and then optimizing them. You just simply are changing the variable. Now that we have this, let's hit continue. This opens this dual window and it looks really technical. Like you need a computer science background to understand how to use this, but it's very simple. You can go up here where it says untitled and you can rename this in case you like to be organized like I do so that I can go back and see things that I've done in the past. So we'll just name this prompt engineering. It's pretty incredible that from that one simple sentence, we now have, you are tasked with writing a YouTube script about prompt engineering. Your goal is to create an engaging, informative, and well-structured script that will educate viewers on this topic. Follow these instructions carefully and produce a high quality script. First, consider the following input variables. So here you can see on the side where it's red and bracketed, topic, that's where we'll say what the topic is, what we want the script to be about. Duration, how long is the script gonna be? Is this a YouTube short? Or maybe this is a long format video. 
and target audience. When I first started this YouTube channel, I would forget to specify that my audience is beginners, people who are interested in starting to use Gen AI, but not sure where to start and teachers and parents. So this is really great. It automatically puts it in here. And then it goes on and on and you can see how structured it is with the different numbered listing that really helps the LLMs. Now let's look at how to change these variables. So you can change them over here. If you're using something like ChatGPT, you would just copy and paste all of this into ChatGPT and manually change it. But we're not going to do that. We're going to stay working in here and you're going to hit these set variable values. And that just makes it easier to change what you're going to say in there. Let's say that the topic that we want this YouTube video to be about is prompt engineering. Well, since the overall topic is prompt engineering, we'll say how to craft the perfect prompt. Next, we're going to talk about the duration. Let's make this a YouTube short, so under 60 seconds. And target audience, Gen AI beginners. As you can see, while I'm filling them out on the right side of the screen, the variables are automatically being input in to the user prompt on the left side of the screen. The next, we're going to run this prompt and see what the output is. The prompt is basically the task or problem that we want the AI to work on. Now it's going to run this optimized prompt that it created with the different variables that we put in there. Hey there, AI enthusiast. Ever felt like you're playing charades with ChatGPT? Well, today we're diving into the art of prompt engineering your secret weapon for getting amazing results from AI. I mean, this is incredible. It basically goes through the whole YouTube script over here. On the right-hand side of the corner here, you'll see text and markdown. Let's talk about markdown. Markdown is like a simple set of instructions that the computer uses to turn your text into beautifully formatted documents. It was created with the idea that you shouldn't have to learn complex programming languages or HTML to write structured documents. For example, if you type two asterisks around a word, it becomes bold. Or if you use a hashtag followed by a word, you've got yourself a heading. Markdown is perfect for notes, blogs, or even AI-generated content. When you use Markdown with AI tools like Anthropics Claude, the AI can give you responses that are not only informative, but also much easier to read. On the top right side of the response screen, you'll be able to toggle between text and Markdown doesn't make a huge difference in this case of a YouTube script, but in other prompts, you might want to use the markdown if you're putting it into ChatGPT or another LLM like that. That way it comes out formatted the way that you want. One more thing I want to show you in this window up here, you can select this button to change the model. In this dropdown, you can see we're in 3.5 Sonnet, which I think is the best. Some people prefer Opus, but you can switch and then you can see what the different responses would be. Let's switch it to Opus, and then we can go back and run it again. It'll give you a different output based on that model. As you can see, Opus gave us a lot more text than the prior version. And then let's say we want to go back to the other version. I just click here for version history and can go back to an earlier version by just selecting that and running it again. Here's another quick thing to consider on the top left hand corner. You'll select these lines and bullets if you want to see past prompts that you've used. And then on the right hand side, the little garbage can, you can click that to delete it and that will permanently delete it if you want to keep it all clean and ready to go. So see, as I deleted that one, since we were working in the workbench, which is just this window you're looking at, it just deleted it and went back to the past one that I was working on. That's an easy way to see prompts that you've recently optimized. And if you select the plus sign, that will create a new prompt window for you to start again. Another helpful way to use this for creating the perfect prompt is you can actually click on dashboard and you can go to prompt library and that's going to give you a bunch of different pre-formulated prompts. Fun fact, OpenAI also has a prompt library that is pretty extensive. I'm going to show you at the end of this video how to get into that one as well. And by accessing these prompt libraries, it makes it really easy to create your own because you can just 
pick and choose from these, optimize them again using console, and then you have ones that are specific to the tasks that you're doing on a regular basis. So check back at the end for full access to OpenAI's prompt library. This is Anthropic's prompt library, and you can use any of these. They all fall under different use cases. So here I have all prompts selected. You could select personal prompts, business prompts, or user submitted prompts. We'll choose motivational muse. You select that and you can see once you open that prompt, it's really helpful because not only does it show you the system prompts and the user prompts, but then it also shows you an example output. So you could say, okay, and the API request, which we won't need that. That's more for developers. But basically then you can just copy and paste this. Let's copy the system prompt. Anthropic makes it really easy to get back to the console because you can just click on that hyperlink and it takes you right back to the console. Then we go here to generate a prompt and paste. This is already an optimized prompt that they had recommended in their prompt library, but we're going to put it in here and make it even better. Generate prompts. There you go. How cool is that? We can go through and see, does this look good? Or maybe there's something that we want to take out and you can edit it right in here. So if we say, oh no, we don't want number two, offer words of encouragement and support directly related to the specific needs. Maybe we don't want that condition in there. You could just backspace, delete that before continuing, but we'll just leave it as is for this example, continue. And now we can go in and here we reset our variables. So I'm going to go again, back up here to set variable values. We choose here what input we want to give it. Since this is for generating a personalized motivational message, we'll say that we need help focusing on having a growth mindset. Now on the left side of the screen, that's green and we're good to go. And now that we run that, here's the response. Embracing a growth mindset is a powerful journey and it gives us our output. So maybe I loved this prompt and I can use it for other things. Then on the left hand side here, you can copy and paste into your prompt library. Let's talk about prompt library. There's one tool that I really like to use for my prompt library because it just seamlessly will auto populate those prompts into whatever large language model or AI tool that I'm using. Let me show you how to do that. Now that we've mastered Anthropic's console in creating the perfect prompt, I'm going to show you how to put that into a custom prompt library and how you can auto populate that into all the different AI tools that you use on any given day. To create an actionable prompt library, I use PromptBot. It's a great Chrome extension as well if you're using the Chrome browser. But basically what it does is it organizes all of your prompts by category in folders, and then you can set different variables and it will automatically populate that into Anthropics Cloud, Google's Gemini, ChatGPT, whichever LLM you're using you can automatically populate the perfect prompts that you've created using console into the AI tool that you're using with just keyboard shortcuts. Once you've logged in and created a free account with PromptBox, you will end up at a window like this and select my prompt. And you won't have anything here yet. So you go down to the bottom right side of the screen and create a folder. These are the different folders that I have. But you could also just create a prompt or just add a prompt. So let's just add a prompt since we were just working in Anthropic's console on a YouTube script prompt. I'll just title this as YouTube script. Then you can on the right side here, you can color code it. If you organize things with colors, then you can just select the color that you want it to be. And you will type in or in our case, since we just used Anthropic to get the perfect prompt, we will just paste in our prompt. This is part of building our prompts library. I also keep my prompts in Notion in a prompt library there, just so I have them in Notion as a backup. Here I've pasted this in and you can see where Anthropic created the variables. We can take that out in prompt box because it's going to add its own. Before we set the variables, Let's click here and we're going to add a shortcut. You can make that shortcut anything you want. And basically when you're in ChatGPT, you'll just use the backslash and then type in your shortcut and it'll automatically move you to a new window to fill the variables. And then you just push enter and your prompt is generated. Let me show you how this works. Let's create a shortcut. I'm going to use capital Y, capital T for YouTube script. I know that when I do backslash capital Y capital T script, it will put this optimized prompt into the AI tool. Next, let's create our variables. 
you toggle variables on. Then when you select what you want to make your variable, see how I highlighted context? Then I will push the plus sign and this becomes the variable. In here, you'll be able to write whatever the context is for that prompt. This will highlight as well as another variable. We'll hit the plus sign. Now I have two different variables for this AI script prompt. Our shortcut again is capital Y, capital T, script. If you think it looks good, you scroll to the bottom and you can see it shows your variables context and save. This is the prompt right here. Now that we've created it, what we're going to do next is pretend like we're working in ChatGPT, for example, or any of the other LLMs that you're using. All I'm going to do is use backslash YT script. Once I type that in, it automatically takes me to this window and it puts me where I need to type in the context. Now, instead of having to type out the whole prompt and then figure out how to optimize that every single time, all I'm doing is adding the context. In this instance, let's say the context is the best AI tools for productivity. Once you've typed in your variable, hit the tab button and it goes to the next variable. If you only have one, then you're done. But I'm going to fill out the next variable. I'm going to reinforce what I'm explaining. It works really well with LLMs if at the end of your prompt, restate what the important thing is that you wanted to do. I'm going to add the variable of what we wanted to talk about, and that is AI tools for productivity. Hit tab and you're done. It automatically moves us back to ChatGPT. Now we have the long, perfectly optimized prompt already generated in here. Then you just send it and you're done. You can do that for hundreds of prompts in your prompt library. Then you have a prompt library with all the different things. If it's responding to an email, if it's outreach, research, whatever it is that you do repeatedly with prompts, you can create a library with Promptbox and very simply be able to add variables and do this every single time. There we go. And we got our output. ChatGPT also has a huge prompt library available with pre-optimized prompts. You can check that out at platform.openai.com. That's it. We did it. Yay. I'm going to include a link to Promptbox in the description. I can't end the video without asking you to please subscribe if you found this video helpful. It supports me and helps me keep going. Thank you, guys.